What the frig is going on? Oh. Which one's this one here? What the It's weird sometimes. What the frig is going on? This is so wacky, the friggin' uh, rate. Holy crap. Check, check, check. Okay, Michael J here. How you guys doing? Hope everybody's doing fine. I've, uh, I'm doing okay. Just uh, been working on a new computer build since uh, yesterday, so I'm running behind. Still sorting out some kinks. Feels like I've been sorting out these kinks for about uh, a year now, or a year plus. 
But, uh, hey, it's just the way it is at times, folks. Just the way sh we roll. Okay, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to hijack potato quality. We're just using this for uh, uh, a reference, fair use policy, so we can discuss it. Uh, make sure uh, any questions, comments you put in the uh, chat. And uh, what more can I say? And if you have any, oh, yes. What more I can say is if there's any issue with the video or the audio, please let me know in chat so I can work at sorting this stuff out. So uh, let's switch over to uh, the main screen and get it started. This is going to start off with the Black Friday deals in uh, World of Warships. So Black Friday is here, and there's some really good deals. And I wasn't really intending to make an extra video today, but I've had a lot of questions already on what would be the best deals to get, what ships should you think about picking up in the shop, and maybe if some of these bundles are a decent option. I wanted to give you my opinion just so that you can go into it knowing generally what I think would be a decent option for someone looking to spend money on the game. And right up front, John Bart is available. <laughs> I really hate this practice of creating artificial scarcity on online goods um, and objects that are virtual by removing it from the game because it's too popular, it's too strong, and then you just go sell it at a limited time deal. I really don't like that. Personally, I would prefer they just balance the ships out. <laughs> We'd have a much better game then instead of having these random premiums that pop up every once in a while and uh, it flood the matchmaker with really, really strong ships that are only available every once in a while or just never available again. I would prefer to see a more balanced game, but that's not what this is about. This is about Black Friday and what I think you should buy. Now, starting at the top, we have these sequential bundles in Black Friday, and this is a surprisingly good deal. Uh, assuming you want a Dunkirk B, you're actually getting a bit of a discount. This is around 5,100, 5,200 doubloons. Um, to get your way all the way through these sequential bundles. And if we look up here in the ships tab, the Dunkirk is actually around uh, 5,500 doubloons. So you're getting a small discount on the Dunkirk, not a huge one, of course, but I think the important thing here is that you're actually getting some of these containers that will maybe give you something good. Um, but the really big one to look out for is the coal. So if you're wanting some coal, it's a decent way to pick things up, wanting some premium time, you know, think about the guaranteed rewards. Assume the crates are just gonna give you nothing. That's what I would say. And then think about if you want a Dunkirk with 10 days premium, 10,000 coal, and some credits, is that worth 5,200-ish doubloons? If it is, I mean, it's pretty solid. Now moving on to the premium containers. These are going to sometimes give you ships, sometimes gonna give you something you probably weren't as interested in. Um, so for 1,250 doubloons, you're going to have a chance at some of these Black Friday ships. And you should know that it's a 12% drop rate. I really do appreciate Wargaming adding these drop rates. I'm not, again, I'm not a huge fan of loot boxes, but at least they show you the drop rates and you have the option of buying these ships. So if you think about it, 12% drop rate, every eight or nine crates or so, you're going to potentially get a ship. And that's not how statistics work. That's not how it goes. You could go 30 crates without getting a ship. However, you should know that after 19 crates, the 20th crate will then drop you a ship, right? That's stated down here. So if you get unlucky at worst, it's going to be 19 crates, which is very expensive. Let's be honest, right? That is much more than the value of most of these ships, right? Assuming that it's around, let's say, 20,000 doubloons for 20 crates, uh, you're much better off going for any of these premiums outside the Oceano, but I wouldn't get that here, honestly. Um, we'll get into the ships later, but you really shouldn't be going for the loot boxes. In my opinion, I think they're going to be disappointing to you. You're going to likely spend more money than you think, and you're probably not going to get the ship you're wanting. So 
spend your money on the thing you want directly because they are all for sale here. I think that is the best advice I can give you. Depending on what I say about each one of these ships, we'll go through them quickly and I'll kind of describe the play style. Um, make sure you just get the ship. I really, really can't stress this enough. Don't go for the loot boxes. They are really, really disappointing most of the time. And you're going to see people post on their five boxes they bought that they got the ship they wanted. You're going to see those pictures, but you got to remember, it's only the people who are winning that are going to post. As somebody who doesn't get anything, they're not going to post anything about that. You're only seeing the, the small percentage of people that win. Keep that in mind. Just go for the ship you want and then just say to yourself, I'm okay with spending the doubloons on this and that's it. Buy the ship and be happy with it. Knowing that you didn't have to suffer at the <laughs> hands of loot boxes. And now on to these ships. Which ones do I recommend? Well, let's take a look at the ones I even have. Right? So I have Massachusetts. I have Tirpitz. Uh, actually, let's go to the beginning. I have the Dunkirk. I have the Sims. I have Atlanta, Sharnorst, Otago, Massachusetts, Tirpitz, Grav Zeppelin, Cossack, Lo Yang. Uh, San Zhang is a Saipan, just reskinned. Uh, Palmer, John Bart, and Yoshino. Those are the ones I have. And honestly, out of these ships, what do I play? I play Massachusetts. I play Palmer sometimes, although I really do think you're probably going to be playing the uh, Freddy or the uh, Prince Ruprecht over this ship these days, given the importance of uh, 406 guns uh, over 380s that aren't very accurate. I think Palmer's fallen off quite a lot, especially with the German Battle Cruiser line. And surprisingly, to probably a lot of you, I actually don't play my Jean Bart that much at all. And that really comes down to me just owning a Borgone. <laughs> and if I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to play a Jean Bart, I just think, oh, well, would I rather have an extra turret and be a little faster? And the answer is usually yes. So uh, I end up playing the Borgone a lot more, but it is one of my best tier 10 ships as statistically, and I generally have great games in it. You can go check, I think, a video from yesterday or a couple days ago where I had an awesome game in the Borgone. And it's really good. And I actually don't find myself playing the Yoshino all that much at all. And really that comes down to this ship not being that well armored for how big it is. 30 millimeters of armor can work, but given the size of it, uh, it's very, very, very easy to hit this thing. <laughs> so you're playing at range, you're relying on powerful, fast reloading, high explosive shells, essentially. You get some of the fastest reload on 305s in the game, and the HE hurts, hits like a truck, has great fire chance. However, your ship just isn't that tanky and you're forced to play at range. And I don't really find that enjoyable for me personally, but I know for those of you who want to play at range with bigger HE guns, having the 20 kilometer torpedo meme, that kind of thing, especially now that you don't get a penalty for hitting people on your team, uh, it's, it could be a decent ship to pick up for you, but I personally just don't really enjoy this one. John Bart gets my full recommendation. I mean, it's just amazing. Borgone is amazing. It's an amazing ship. The only reason you wouldn't get yourself a Jean Bart is if you're going to pick yourself up a Borgone. Because for me personally, I had the Borgone and I just don't play the Jean Bart very much. I've said that a couple times already, but I want to make that very clear <laughs> that you shouldn't waste your money if you're not going to you're not going to play what you spend it on, right? Now back to the ships here, we're looking at the Palmer. It's a decent ship, it's a decent brawler, but I think you're gonna have a better time with the German Battlecruiser line if you're wanting to go for those secondaries. And if you're wanting to play the tankier style of battleship, you should know that in the German line, the tankier line, that the Palmer and the Freddy have some of the worst turtle belt. Okay, I just want to mention this really quick and then we'll move on. But look at how very low this gets. It's it's basically at the waterline, just a little below. So it's very easy to get citadeled in the Palmer and Freddy if you're turning even slightly. Ships like the Kerr First and Bismarck, their turtle back goes much lower. It's still a decent ship, but I just don't find myself playing it all that much anymore. Uh, it's been a little bit uh, power crept in my opinion. Um, mainly just due to the, th the inaccurate 380 millimeter guns. Freddy is still a decent ship, especially now that it's got the pretty fast reload and pretty decent dispersion on those 406s or 420s. And you still have the secondaries and Freddy actually has a little bit more HP as well. But 
the hydro torpedo German battleship that's pretty tanky meme is pretty fun. But again, German battle cruisers are coming up. You're probably going to play those over this anyway. I know at least I am feeling that way. Moving on, we've got the Saipan. I don't find this ship all that good. Again, I have the uh, the reskinned version, but you get higher tier planes, but not very many of them. And personally, I mean, you guys know how I feel about carriers. I don't enjoy playing them, but I have played it a little bit. It is pretty hilarious when you hit your HE bombs or your rockets on people for just massive, massive damage because, again, they're tier 10 planes. But I think there are better options at tier 8. You should really be looking at the uh, Chikalov or uh, maybe a Kaga later on. We see that Kaga here. Tons and tons of planes on a Kaga. It's very hard to run out of planes on this thing. So I don't think I would go for the Saipan. If you're choosing between any of these three carriers, probably go with the Kaga out of all of them. I personally don't have it, so take that with a grain of salt. But out of these three, I think the Kaga is probably the best one. On to the Lo Yang, a destroyer that is incredible. It's got tons of utility with its hydro and smoke combo, and it honestly is a ship I never play anymore. <laughs> the lack of gunpower and the mediocre torpedoes, it's a fun ship to play with its hydro if you can get in range of that hydro, but honestly, this ship just doesn't feel like it has a specialty at anything anymore. You really have to push hard to get into this hydro range. And it's pretty difficult to get in at those kind of ranges these days, just with how much power there is in these DPM cruisers, battleships that are just always going to be shooting at you. It's difficult to push in as a DD. It's difficult to push in as any ship. And now with submarines going to be spotting you as well, there might be some utility with the Hydro there, but again, you're going to be lit up by those subs as well. So you got to be careful. But if you want that Hydro DD experience, it's decent. It's just a ship I personally don't play all that often. I've already talked at length about Chambard, I think. I think that's probably one of the better pickups, assuming you don't have Borgone, or you're probably not going to get Borgone. Kaga, again, probably the best carrier here to get. I'm not a huge fan of those. Cossack is a very interesting ship, because this ship has a kind of slow reload, but you actually get eight guns, and they pack a punch. So a five-second reload, not amazing, but 1,700 base damage and an 8% fire chance this is a very, very strong gunboat for Tier 8, and it honestly can stack up against Tier 9 sometimes, assuming you're maneuvering correctly and well, and you're able to use the time in between salvos to dodge some of the faster firing guns. They do have floaty arcs, though, keep that in mind, and you are a little bit lacking on torpedoes with only a, a 4 uh, launcher here, so you only get 4 torps, and they're not all that amazing either. So. You're more of a gunboat, but a very strong gunboat, assuming you can lead the target, and you're okay with a slightly short, slightly longer reload, sorry. It's a decent ship, but again, I don't really play it that much. Atlanta, poor, poor Atlanta, been power crept. <laughs> your AA, you gotta know with the Atlanta going into it, your AA is basically useless. Uh, it's all in these uh, dual-purpose turrets, and of course we know that the dual-purpose turrets are the long-range flak shells, and flak is just RNG and it's probably not going to land where you want it. It's continuous DPS is what you're really looking for. That's the reliable stuff, and Atlanta really just doesn't have that. <laughs> so that's disappointing. Poor range, poor pen, floaty guns, and a meta that is incredibly passive these days really means Atlanta is a difficult ship to play. It's not horrible by any means. It can still work, but it's very hard to find the right positions to get into. You get up tiered into tier 8, tier 9 games, it's going to be tough to play. It's it's still fun. The DPM of it, the sequential fire rainbow fire spam is pretty hilarious. But it's it's hard to play these days. Alaska, awesome ship. Honestly, super powerful 305mm guns. Relatively tanky cruiser that has radar. This thing is very strong. It's been removed for a reason. It's incredibly popular for a reason. It's one of the better ships at tier 9. It still is, even even like how people said when it came out, it still is that good. It's a great ship. I just don't play it all that often, but it is ship I still play every once in a while. The thing that's really nice about it, you have a 36mm deck armor. So, assuming you're playing at long range, you can actually bounce battleship shells off of your deck armor. Of course, 27mm sides, 28 really doesn't help you that much here. 
Uh, 406s are still going to overmatch you. So you've got to be a little bit careful about that. Um, so you're not really tanky enough to go up against a full battleship, but as a support ship, as a flanker ship, as a island radar ship, this, this thing's awesome. And of course, improved pen angle AP that's heavy. Okay, folks. Uh, as I said, any questions, comments, throw in chat. And uh, also, if there's any issue, and in particular, if there's any issue with the audio or the video, let me know in chat so I can work at correcting it. And we'll get back to the uh, video. Thank you very much. That hits this hard, it's really good. They're floaty shells. You've got to get used to that. But they're it's a very, very strong ship. Charnors, I think this is a fun ship, but I don't think it's any good anymore. <laughs> Uh, as horrible as that sounds, these guns are just not good. <laughs> the the guns the guns were bad when they were released, and they've just gotten worse. So I wouldn't actually buy Sharnors. You should really be thinking about playing the uh, Prince Heinrich at tier seven, the new German battlecruiser line. That thing is pretty solid. You've got better secondaries. You've got better main guns. Um, you got longer range torps. It's it's just a better ship, I think, than Sharnor. So I, I probably wouldn't invest in one these days. Um, but you know, it can still be fun. It's not it's not the end of the it's not the worst ship in the game, that's for sure. Sims Sims is a ship that is a weird one. You get well, only four guns. And you get some actually somewhat buffed torpedoes nowadays. Uh, they made the short range ones a little better. Yeah, so you get seven kilometer range, they used to be a little shorter. The ship's gotten buffed. It's really, you're bringing this ship in for its utility. The long American smoke duration is incredibly nice to have, but you miss out on the gunpowder compared to Mayan, right? You're missing a turret, and your torps are decent, a different, interesting choice, but the ship isn't really that meta-defining. It's decent. You can use it as a gunboat. You can use it to knife fight people. It's incredibly maneuverable. You can see a 2.7 second rudder shift with 500 meter turning radius. 38 knots. It's very maneuverable. It's a fun knife fighter if you're getting into those close brawly fights as a DD. But I'd say those don't happen too often anymore. And I wouldn't really recommend you spend money on a on a Sims these days. It is relatively cheap, but personally, don't play mine ever, really. <laughs> Massachusetts. Now, this is one that you're going to think I would wholeheartedly recommend, considering I, in the past, I have said this is my favorite battleship in the game. However, you have to remember this ship has been nerfed, okay? The secondaries are certainly not what they used to be. You only get the old accuracy, the original accuracy this ship uh, came with after 45 seconds, or is it 35 seconds? I actually forget of your uh, secondaries firing. 45 seconds. So after the full 45 seconds and you have that main accuracy then finally your secondaries are as good as they used to be when you just instantly clicked on someone so i find it a bit, a bit disappointing honestly <laughs> the secondaries feel pretty pretty bad <laughs> these days now obviously there are other benefits about the ship outside of secondaries you got 406 millimeter guns keep in mind that these seem to be much worse than something like a north carolina where their sigma is much worse at 1.7 sigma instead of 2.0 but the minimum dispersion value, so that's the best possible cluster you could have, is actually much better than the North Carolina. So you have lower lows and higher highs when it comes to how good your dispersion is. So it actually results in pretty decent salvos most of the time. You can't always count on it, but every once in a while, you get some pretty solid salvos. So these are reasonably accurate 406s. And of course, you get the incredible repair party that has a 40 second cooldown. I'm not saying the ship is bad in, by any means, guys, by the way. It's a good ship still. I just find the secondaries a little disappointing now that they've been nerfed. That's all. You should get it if you don't have it and you're wanting that premium American secondary battleship feel. If you're looking for that, you don't think you're going to get Ohio. Massachusetts is a solid pickup. It's very strong in those tier 8 games. And it really is able to carry matches through. It's just, for me, who's played with the old secondaries, a little disappointing. That's all. Now on to the Tirpitz. I think you should not get this ship. <laughs> if you're wanting a tier 8 secondary battleship, 
just buy the Massachusetts. It's better. <laughs> better guns, better armor, better heal. The secondaries are probably slightly better on Tirpitz because of that baked-in accuracy bonus they've gotten uh, alongside all of the secondary nerfs that have happened to the Massachusetts. So secondaries are a little better on Tirpitz these days, I would say. Not by much, but a little better. And you have torpedoes. However, however, this ship has a tumor called a superstructure. <laughs> and you die very quickly through this superstructure. Yes, you can angle, but people are going to get full pens here. It's very easy to farm you with AG. It's very, very easy to kill. And the instant you go broadside, while not taking citadels, you can very easily take 20 to 30k salvos from uh, your other battleships at the same tier. So you're taking a lot of pain and you're not dishing it out too well considering these 380s aren't that amazing. They really are held back by their poor dispersion. That's really what it comes down to. I have much better games in Massachusetts from a main gun standpoint, from a tanking standpoint, and I find myself far more confident in a Massachusetts and much better off to carry matches out. Turpitz is still a decent fun ship. I'm not saying you can't have fun in it, I just think the Massachusetts is still better, despite what I said, just said about it. <laughs> now, Otago is actually the very first premium I ever bought in this game. And I think it is one of the best cruisers that I've played. Not the overpowered meta-defining cruiser, but I think this thing is just fun. It's got great concealment, it's got great maneuverability, and your torpedoes have great firing angles. That's something you don't really get on the Japanese heavy cruisers. These uh, torpedoes fire forward, these fire backwards. It's just so comfortable to play. I really, really do enjoy this ship. You have a long reload time. That is a given. However, it's a bit of a bonus because due to your long reload, you get heavy, heavy alpha strike damage potential. And in that 16 second time combined with your maneuverability, you can make it incredibly hard for others to hit you. The more DPM focused ships at your tier struggle to deal with you just because even at 10, 12 kilometers, it's very hard to hit this ship when it's maneuvering. And even if you do hit this ship, there's actually the possibility you shatter or you bounce as a battleship player. 41 millimeter deck armor means you're pretty safe at longer ranges. We talked about Alaska having a 38, 36 millimeter deck armor. Um, and how good that was for it. So a tier lower, a smaller ship, uh, and one that's more maneuverable, it's very, very, very nice to have. However, if you're kiting away at this angle, and let's say you turn away, you have to consider that your citadel is actually stepped here. So you're gonna eat citadels through here. It happens quite often to me when I'm not able to swing my angle in quite in time to make use of this good deck armor. You get penned right through here. 27 millimeters overmatched by all 406 and above guns. It does hurt. However, it's a small target to hit, so it's not too likely. This ship is a ton of fun, and I don't play it very often anymore, but it is one of the more fun cruisers at the tier eight, mid tier level. I really enjoy it. And that's all to say, before you consider, it has a heel. It's a tier eight cruiser with a heel. I know that's getting more common these days, but this really was one of the strongest cruisers in the game back in the day just because of this heal. Giving you that ability to take some damage, get into a pretty poor situation, and if you survive, you're able to still repair your ship and come back and fight. And it's not something every tier 8 cruiser can say. It's a great ship still, however, it's not the meta-defining ship anymore, that's for sure. So there you go. There's my recommendations for Black Friday. I think there's some good deals in here. Uh, definitely avoid the premium containers. And Dunkirk is a decent deal if you're wanting a Dunkirk. It's not a great ship, but if you want it, it's a decent deal with the extra stuff you get with it. For me personally, if I was starting a new account or I was a new player and I didn't know what to get, but I knew I wanted to get a few premiums that would be fun to help me get some credits, that kind of thing. Honestly, I would buy myself a Jean Bart. That would be the first one I'd buy just because Borgon is so fun to me. And Jean Bart is amazing. People say it all the time, but it really is a great ship. I would also consider an Alaska and I'd consider a Massachusetts. Those really are the three. And I mean, I am a battleship player. I like the bigger guns. I like hitting people hard, that kind of thing. So it shouldn't be all that surprising that these are the three that I would really buy. So that's my recommendation for you. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it, or at least gave you something to think about here. I think that... It... Well, I gotta say, Mr. Potato, you gave us something to think about. And uh, well presented, excellently uh, presented, like it. That's great. Okay, so for a comparison, whether it's comparable or not, that's subjective or arbitrary, and that'll be up to you to uh, adjudicate uh, for yourself. Nonetheless, we're going to look at Mr. Mountbatten now. He did a Black Friday Warships, and let's see what he's recommending. So without further ado, and as I said, uh, any audio or video issues, because I've been just doing some major stuff over the last couple of days, just throw in chat. So if there's any issue with audio or video, let me know. And let's head to uh, Mr. Sea Lord Mountbatten. Hello. Oh, and I'd also like to add that we are showcasing these uh, people because I, I think they're decent people and uh, under the fair use policy. So we have a comparison, something to uh, evaluate and uh, figure out what's best uh, for you. Not what's best for me, what's best for you. Okay, back to the video. Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today, Black Friday has begun in World of Warships. I, um, I don't know, I must be Nostradamus or something, because if you guys watched yesterday's video, I said, hmm, it's pretty surprising that Black Friday is, well, this week in the United States, and the Black Friday event hasn't started yet in World of Warships, and... I literally uploaded that video at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I think, like, almost at the same time, uh, the event went live on the North American server, along with uh, the video up on World Warship's main channel. So, yeah, pretty freaking funny there. Good joke, Wargaming. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to go through and explain to you guys what you guys need to know for the Black Friday event, and my recommendations to you in terms of what you may want to pick up in this event. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, the event is active for 13, well, 12 days by the time this video goes up. So you basically have um, this week and then halfway into next week to participate in this event. Now you can earn two types of containers in this event. You have the standard Black Friday containers, which you can earn through uh, combat missions. But then we have, of course, the premium Black Friday containers that you can outright buy for dubs or money. They have released the the um, chances for the, the the drop chances, I should say, for these containers. Uh, apparently, there is a one sixteenth chance you will get a ship. Um, and shoot, on stream last night, um, we got the twenty five bundle just to check it out and see what's up, and I got five ships in that. Cool. I got, um, shoot, the, the Sims, the Otago, the Kaga, uh, the Saipan, and then the Palmer of all ships. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that was streamer RNG or what, but that happened. And even though that happened to me, I, I still wouldn't really buy the containers because you're still gambling at that point. You can still see, well, you can see the chances now, which I'm very glad they went ahead and got these, um, chances published for this event because this is one of their big money maker events uh, it's based on loot boxes for the year so glad that they're seeing i'm glad to see that they're keeping their word there i would rather encourage you if you did want to pick a ship up for black friday this year just go out right and purchase them from the armory uh, you can see exactly what you're getting and the discounts are actually pretty darn good um, the Palmer, and you can get the Palmer for, I think it's $55 and change worth of doubloons, which is great for a tier 9 premium ship that is, in my opinion, the funnest tier 9 premium right now, that normally costs like $80 after, well, shoot more than that after tax here in the U.S., so you can buy that straight from the, uh, the Armory if you so choose so. Um, now, do keep in mind, these are just 
the normal variations of the ships. They're just in these very nice black camouflages. Like, uh, I'll throw the pomerant up on screen for you here. I think this is one of the best looking ones that we've gotten, you know, hands down in any of the in, in, in any of these events. Just how clean it looks, the nice chrome accents, the iron cross highlighted in red on the bow and the stern. It just looks oh so nice in um, in port and in game as well. Um, although I didn't uh, record Palmer for this video, I think you're probably watching some some ranked right now in uh, in Hanover because that's what I've been doing mostly. Um, but anyway, so you can buy them there. You can get them in the containers now. If you do get them in the containers, either through the combat missions or you purchase them outright, and you get a ship that you have already, just like in prior years, you do get a combat mission to kind of reimburse you for getting a ship that you already have. For instance, since of course I buy ships all the time to do reviews uh, for the channel, I had most of these ships except for the Kaga. So in my combat missions right now, I have several of these missions waiting for, uh, waiting to be completed at the moment. And depending upon the tier that you got, the rewards are a little bit different. So for um, for tier 7, you get 1,500 dubs back by winning 5 battles. And in, in, uh, well, in my case, in The Sims, you do this in random battles, co-op, or ranked. For tier 8, you get 2,500 dubs back. And again, you do this in co-op, ranked, random battles, how, whatever. And then for tier 9 ships for the Palmern that I got, um, I get 2,500 dubs and 25,000 coal on top of that. Now, if you guys remember last year, uh, this was a bit of an um, issue because the way it was worded last year in the descriptions, it sounded like if you bought the black ship, you got these missions either way. Um, because back then, it was really weird the way they did it too. If you got the, 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 the black ship, let's say I got Massachusetts black and I already had Massachusetts. I would have to play Massachusetts, not the black version of the ship that I just bought, and, and win five battles in it to get the 2,500, or not the 2,500, the 1,500 doubloons back. Um, same if, I think last year, yeah, it was Jean Bart last year. Um, so if I would get Jean Bart B, I'd have to play five battles in Jean Bart to get the 25,000 coal on top of the doubloons back because, uh, yeah, I don't want to play the ship that I just bought or got out of a container. That was very, very weird in my opinion. Uh, but they've gotten rid of that. You can play either the base ship or the black ship, win five battles and whatever co-op ranked, random, and get your credits, uh, credits, get 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 your doubloons or your coal depending upon the tier of your ship. So that's pretty cool. They've improved a lot this this event. Also, for some reason, the Dunkirk is available in sequential bundles. I don't know why they chose the Dunkirk for that. Um, it's a historical ship, so collectors might like it, but collectors would want the normal version of Dunkirk and not the Dunkirk Black. So, yeah, and if you go through the, the sequential bundles, it costs a little bit less than just outright buying Dunkirk. Um, you have to go through... Um, several bundles of increasing value, and then finally the Dunkirk is just 1,999 doubloons. Um, but again, for the price of going through this, you can pretty much go through a normal a purchase of Dunkirk. Now, great, you don't get the Black Friday containers, the Shadow Lurker camos, um, the gift containers, distant voyages containers, a million credits, um, or the uh, the coal, or the premium time, but. Yeah, and you get two premium containers at the end right before you get the Dunkirk. So it's a slightly cheaper way of getting Dunkirk. But, I mean, is it really about Dunkirk or is it getting the discounted prices on the um, the containers and such? So you can do that too. Pick some pretty cool stuff and then you get a Dunkirk at the end of it. A ship that isn't overwhelmingly popular by any stretch of the imagination. I like the Dunkirk, um, but I believe I'm in the minority for, 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 for that ship at least. God, I can't talk for some reason. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, besides that, the only really two ships I'd say you really want to go for in this Black Friday event would be, of course, the Alaska, like the video I put out about a, you know, a well-timed month in advance video on, hey, just get the Alaska in the Black Friday event, which is still very true. Alaska would be one ship that I'd say you, you'd, you want to go for. Uh, the other ship would, of course, be the Jean Barbie, um, which is, like, right under the Alaska in terms of credit production, um, 
the John Barbie. It's if you don't know what the John Barbie is, it's originally up to to tier nine. The 15-inch guns have a much slower reload time, better sigma, better accuracy. Get a reload booster to where you can get a 11-second um, reload on these eight 15-inch guns with French AP, which means you can punch the absolute crap out of whatever it is you're facing off against. Um, on top of that, too, though, it is a tier 8 hull at tier 9 that's going to see tier 10 games. has tier 8 HP, but the guns are so good, you'll easily do easily, easily 100,000 damage a game because you got the good AP, but if the AP is not working, you switch over to the HE, throw HE in the, in, the, in the enemy team's face, get the reload booster, keep them on fire, so forth and so on. So it's a, it's a really good credit earner ship too. Uh, but I would go for the Alaska first and then get the John Barbie. They, they're, they're both removed ships, but you could get both. But if you only had to pick one, I would go with the Alaska because overall, in my opinion, it's the more useful ship. Because um, Alaska, if there's tier 9 ranked randoms or whatever, it's a cruiser that punches like a battleship. While the Jean Bar is kind of a lesser battleship at tier 9. Because, again, it's tier 8 French BB armor in a tier 9 slot with 15-inch guns. Now, again, the reload boost is great and all, but when you're playing ranked or clan battles or competitive... There's ways you can easily mitigate guns of that small caliber at tier 9. Meanwhile, you know, the, the Alaska is, again, a heavier hitter for its weight class. And, a, uh, again, can tank a lot better for a cruiser than a Jean Bar can tank compared to another tier 9 BB. Like, let's say you put a Jean Bar and, like, you know, this is a little bit of, a, a extreme, but, like, a Soyuz next to each other. And the Soyuz can out-tank the, the Jean Bar. Or you can take an Izumo and put it next to the Jean Bar. And the Ismo can out-tank the Jean Bar simply because of the increased HP and the better armor and all that jazz. So, yeah, I'd get Alaska, but if you don't want a cruiser, get the Jean Bar. Other than that, the rest of the coal ships aren't... I mean, they're, they're good ships, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm, I'm not crapping on the rest of the ships, but those are the only two I'd say you, you should really take this opportunity and try to pick one of them up during this event. Um, but again, overall, I would just buy what you want. Don't waste your time with the containers, because even though they're... They seem to be pretty generous. You never know. You know, your friend might get two ships. Your other friend might get three ships. I might get five ships. You might get no ships. At the end of the day, you're still spending your money on a chance at getting something rather than just buying what you need out of the army. That's my suggestion to you guys. That's some, and that's my overview of the Black Friday event. Let me know. We okay, there you have it. There's another point of view, POV. That's point of view of Black Friday and the new ships. Uh... New ships or the current ships available for purchase. So there you go. There you go, folks. So questions, comments regarding that, let us know. Throw it in chat. And uh, we're going to go back to uh, Sea Lord Mountbatten. And this is uh, the new dockyard mission regarding... Uh, the uh, repulse and how to get it, plus uh, he says, and more. So let's take a look at this. Let's see what this entails. And uh, without further ado, oh, as I said, audio and video issues, throw it in the comment chat section. Uh, I need uh, some feedback if nothing is uh, working as it should. But if everything's working fine, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. So let's head to the uh, next video. Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And some news that I'm sure many of you have been waiting for. We now know exactly how we are going to get the repulse. Now, we knew it was going to be part of the dockyard, but one of the big things that many had reservations about was, well, is it going to be in the last four stages of the dockyard, where we have to fork out the money to get the ship, or is it going to be a little bit earlier in the line? And I'm very happy to report that it is, in fact, fairly early in the grind, well within the uh, free-to-earn area of the grind for the dockyard. So... We are going to go through this dev blog article. Actually, a um, it's not a dev blog. What is this? A developer bulletin 
Um, we have so many bits of information that come out with this game. Oh, There's a like developer bulletin. My, my. Of these articles that come out. But uh, we have more details about the next update, 1011. This will be, I believe, the mid December update. So I believe the update right before Christmas time. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Really oh, look at the that torps. Released information about He's going to eat some torps. But what do you think, folks? Much about Black One, Friday yet, which two. Is Whoa, one week two from for sure. Today that this video is going up. Really, really, really peculiar there. But anyways, go ahead and dive right on in. Links to the article will be in the description down below. Any relevant images or artwork will be posted up on screen for your viewing pleasure. But if you want to read the article along as I read aloud, again, link will be in the description down below. All right, let's go ahead and get right into it. So Dockyard, in update 1011, you will have the ability to start building new British battleship, the Marlborough, on the Clyde Bank Dockyard. She is based on a 1947 project with some of the design solutions borrowed from the Vanguard class and King George V class. Her primary feature is a powerful main battery consisting of quad gun turrets that they really had trouble getting to work that house 16 356 mm 14 inch guns with a high fire rate of fi with a high rate of fire for a battleship and a decent range of fire. She has good speed, maneuverability, and concealment, but her armor is not as sturdy as that of her counterparts, and her firing accuracy is low. Event Rules The construction process of the dockyard comprises 32 phases. These shipbuilding phases can be progressed through, through by completing dockyard combat mission groups or by spending 1,500 dubs to pass through each phase. The combat mission groups span two updates, 1011 and 110. And the dockyard itself will remain in your ports until the end of 11-1. In total, you can progress through 27 out of the 32 shipbuilding phases by completing the dockyard combat mission groups. You receive the Tier 8 Premium uh, British Battleship Dreadnought and the Snow and Stars Permanent Camouflage, a 6 skill point commander, and a port slot as a reward from completing the 6 shipbuilding phase. Uh, there's the Dreadnought there in the... And what do they call it? Snow, snow star, snow and stars. Permanent camo looks really nice. Nice little festive camo there. Um, Dreadnought is a decent premium ship. No AA though. Um, and I mean, at tier three, it's a nice historical ship to have. It's you know pretty much par for the course for most tier three battleships. There's really not a lot of real variation there. One or two lines are a little bit different, but most of the dreadnoughts down there, hand dreadnoughts down there are just point pointy in at ship toward enemy team. Press W, profit. Dreadnought's not much different than that. I do have a full review on Dreadnought if you want to check that out. And here she is. Completing the 18th shipbuilding phase will reward you with the new battleship, the Tier 6 Repulse, and the Snow and Stars Permanent Camouflage, a 6 skill point commander, and a port slot. Now, they don't mention if Repulse will be um, sold outright either at this moment. I wouldn't really expect them to uh, because, well, one, you either have to grind out the combat missions or, of course, pay... Uh, what 1500 dubs times 18 um i'm not a math teacher but you know who is good at math the the calculator in my phone <laughs> so 1500 times 18 is yeah 27,000 dubs yeah don't worry i'm gonna do it so i can get the review for non the marlboro but the uh but the repulse up for you guys i would of course highly recommend just grinding the ship through for free uh the combat Dockyard missions uh, since since the uh, Puerto Rico fiasco have been actually pretty pretty easy to do, especially by the halfway point through the dockyard. They don't really start to get difficult until you start to get to like the last two phases, and even then, any person who spent a decent amount of time playing the game won't really have trouble completing them. It just might take you a bit longer than you might think. But yeah, I can see why they may not want to sell her outright because it might incline some of us with some uh, loose pockets to throw money at the game to get the repulse but um, again you can get it completely for free 18 the 18th phase is a little over the halfway point through the dockyard so something that's uh, entirely easy to get um, especially again with uh, many players having played the game for quite some time and the way they've changed the missions but anyway Completing other shipbuilding phases will bring you Santa gifts, Santa's big gift, and Santa mega gift containers, New Year's Sky expendable camouflages, Days of Water Ships premium account, coal, steel, research points, and other valuable rewards. That's something, too. You will be paying 27,000 dubs to get just the repulse if you want just the repulse and you want it like on the first day it comes out. But the way the dockyard works, you do get 
more than enough of your money's value out of the dockyard if you do throw money at it. It's a lot of money, but you honestly get quite a lot of stuff. I, I believe you're getting steel now for the for the stages that you... Yeah, it's right down here. You get 250 steel for each completed phase. If you buy through it, then you go back again and just play the directives, which again, I completed the... Um, the Seven Provinces Dockyard and the prior Dockyard. I, of course, bought the ships to review for you guys, but uh, when I just played the game throughout the course of me playing the game, this is during the you know the, the school year when I'm working full-time, I still completed each Dockyard with plenty of time to sp spare, especially since they, um, they extended the time that the Dockyard's in our ports for. So, you know, it's kind of worth it to go through it, but I wouldn't recommend it unless you just got a ton of disposable income and you're fine with that. But anyway, again, if you complete the 30-second ship building phase, you receive the Marlboro with the War Paint Camouflage, a commander with 10 skill points, a port, a port slot, and a commemorative flag. I actually like the War Camo for the Marlboro this time around. Now, the War Camos they give for these dockyards, they're normally very extravagant and gaudy in some cases, but they look really cool. There's a lot of little detail on them. And the Marlboro's one just looks incredibly clean. I really wouldn't mind having her in that like pristine white camo uh, without all the... The dressing up but it, she looks really clean I like the way it looks I like the banners going up and down the side of the ship and all that jazz all right like I said uh, if you do pay through the dockyard you will get 250 still for each completed phase afterwards on the public test server you can receive yeah, 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 yeah but you can't play them okay you can't play the repulse and marble into battle on the test server all right New Year's celebrations another event we have prepared loads of activities to celebrate the New Year, the New Year's Eve com competition, a festive collection, new commanders, and heaps of other rewards. New Year's Eve. One of the primary features of our New Year's celebration is a temporary event called New Year's Eve. This competition is being organized by three snow giants who are brought to life by magic stars. Each giant has its own responsibility in the New Year pre preparations. Help them contribute to the celebration. New Year's Eve is similar to the Aircraft Bureau's rivaling the Battle of the Beast event with minor interface improvements. Updated the tooltips on the team selection screen and above the mission cards. Added the display of the previous day's winning teams on the event's main screen. So it's just like the the uh, Battle of the Beast and the uh, Soviet CV event too, so pretty straightforward here. Uh, the rules. The event starts two weeks after the release of the update and runs until the end of update 1011 is divided into four stages with each stage running for one week once a week you can choose one of the three teams named after the magic stars modus certain or mirna okay during the event you need to complete personal missions that are issued daily to all participants the missions can be completed through throughout the day in random co-op and ranked battles completing the missions will advance you through the personal and team prog uh, progress bars and unlock rewards each team offers different unique rewards such as themed commanders, snow giant with six skill points, and the Omaha Jaguar or the Conte de Cavour in the new Snow and Stars permanent camouflage. The first time you earn a unique reward from any team, you also receive the New Year's Eve achievements. Other rewards include a new temporary resource, Sinterklaas tokens, Christmas and New Year's in the Navy collection containers, and New Year's Sky expendable camouflages. Okay, so that's that event. Some interesting looking camos there. Um, again, the, the, the um, what, what are they called? The, the, the Snow and Stars camo. Very clean looking. I do like it. Um, New Year's Sky camo. Nah, just a little bit of a normal event camo. Nothing too special. Well, not normal event camo. Normal uh, temporary camo. Nothing too special there. Uh, the Christmas and New Year in the Navy collection. The festive collection is dedicated to New Year and Christmas traditions in the Navy. It consists of four pages with six elements on each. The reward for completing each page is one day of, wor of Worship's premium account. The reward for completing the entire collection is a Santa's Big Gift Containers. Alright, there's the collection. Uh, collection elements drop from Christmas and New Year in the, Navy, in, in the Navy containers. These containers can be obtained by participating in the New Year's Eve event in exchange for Santa Claus tokens, credits, and doubloons in the armory. And they've updated the container screen there so you can watch in a very nice uh, screen when you get your Makarov. Uh, New Year Fleet, an update to 11 5 themed combat mission groups will be available to you. The reward for the first group is a New Year permanent camouflage for Tier 8 ships. Completing groups 2 through 4 will earn you the uh, Vesser, the Tier 6 uh, German CV, Fubuki, the Tier 6 Japanese DD, and Ismail, the Tier 6 Soviet battleship. 
This knows and stars permanent camouflage, as well as commanders with six skill points. The reward for completing the last combat mission group is the tier six Dutch cruiser, the Kids. 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 Oh, oh no. Kids June. It, K money. And the snow and stars permanent camouflage for Dutch commander Sinterklaas with 10 skill points. All five combat mission groups will become available simultaneously. However, the first combat mission group can only be completed playing Repulse. Oh, I see what you, I see what you did there, Wargaming. So, uh, oh, you get all five combat mission groups, but the first one can only be done doing Repulse. So does that mean like you can do four of the five without Repulse, but you have to get Repulse to do the other four? That's I would like some clarification on that, Wargaming. Uh, snowflakes, you'll be able to continue earning. It's always a good idea to request clarification. Are you going to put that in writing there, Sea Lord Mountbatten, or not? You can't win, buddy. You can't win. Containers. Uh, the bonus for combat results can be obtained by either scoring the first victory or earning 300 base XP playing a ship. And we've been over this already, but tier 5 to 7 ships get 750 coal. Tier 8 to 9 gets 75 steel. Still. And tier 10 gets one New Year certificate. Alright, and that's already live right now. I've already got gotten a fair bit of coal and still already from the uh, from the event. London got decorated for New Year's. That looks pretty nice. Oh, I like the big nutcrackers. That's nice. Uh, German battleships. So um, the German battle cruiser line will be going live and update till eleven. Finally, we can. Well, those of us that didn't throw thirty-two thousand tubs at the uh, at the um, event, we'll finally be able to get our hands on Sleefen. Okay. Uh, the submarine tweaks are coming in update ten eleven. Oh, I know they, they they changed it some more. Okay, okay. The torpedo home mechanics have been updated. At the maximum launch distance, they will home in strictly on the impact point of a sonar ping without considering the target lead. As the distance to the target decreases, torpedoes will home in with a gradually increased lead. At a, at a specific distance from the target, torpedoes will home in strictly on the lead point. At the same time, just like before, torpedoes stop homing when they are within a certain distance of their target. This change will allow torpedoes to home in on their target in a more natural way and reduce the frequency of situations where homing torpedoes launch launch into proximity of islands that ships high level sonar ping would hit the land. Moreover, it will be somewhat easier for the target itself to dodge homing torpedoes if the sonar ping effect is removed before they hit. Oh, so they're not going to be like if you ping them at maximum range, they're not going to put a lead on it to where like if they stopped homing at that point the ship didn't make any changes, the torpedo would still hit the ship because it led itself basically from the second it got out the tubes. Okay, I think it's a pretty good overall change just from that standpoint too and from the whole not hitting the islands because that, that is really frustrating if you played submarine where the, the target's clearly maybe a kilometer or two away from the island but because he's heading in direction to, to where he'll be behind the island, the torpedoes just donk into the island. Um, it makes that part easier for the submarine. It makes that part, the, the dodging aspect, easier for the uh, target ship, too. So overall, I think it's just a, a better change. Um, da -da -da -da. Other changes. The hydrophone now becomes available sometime after each battle begins. Unlike main battery torpedo launchers, the time that the hydrophone takes to prepare for battle is longer than its reload time. Added an underwater torpedo reticle. You can enter training battles playing subs on maps that feature the underwater world. Added the indication of additional dive capacity depletion for a detected enemy submarine. That's nice. Added information about... And the reason that that last bit's nice is because a lot of people say, well, when I spot submarines, I can't shoot them, but they're right under my ship. It feels like I, d I do nothing. You're really not doing nothing. You're making his dive time deplete much faster. And from playing submarines, let me tell you, there's nothing more painful than watching your five-minute dive time because you got spotted by two ships for 10 seconds get burned away into like a three minute dive time because of how fast it, it it burns when you get spotted by multiple ships so that'll give players the feeling of oh i'm finally doing something now uh, i think it'll help with that at least uh added new tips for summaries and launch sonar pings at a target the ping will be dispersed in, in sufficient time for torpedo homing 
Ship status that screen is brought up by pressing H now displays the ship's detectability from a submarine that is at the operational or periscope depths, as well as when the ship is inside a smoke screen. Add the ability to switch to torpedo launches by pressing 3 for all submarines. Okay, uh, some other minor changes like to the sound and to some general um, interface changes, but nothing too, too important to put in the video that's already almost 20 minutes long. I'm really not right, a guys, fan so of submarines, we'll personally. She's a bit oh, further along the ground than I thought uh, she was going to be. I figured she'd be right Turn in, buddy. Turn 15, in. Oh, well, it's going to be close. Looks like really you're going to eat one of them. Either. I mean, yeah, you uh, are. Event with 32 sections. It's just a little bit over halfway there. Still can completely get it for free, and I don't think it'll be difficult at all for many of us to get it for free. Um, it's definitely much better than the Puerto Rico event where you had to literally spend your entire uh, Christmas and New Year's holiday playing Mortal Warships. So that's a huge improvement, of course, too. And ag again, the is this Des Moines going to come out enough just to get friggin' hammered the crap out of? Let's see. The, um, for the dockyard, it's just a ship that I've been wanting, and I know many of you nice been creeping wanting to back see the game for quite some time. Sneaky little looks like it's gonna be a pretty stupid ship. I mean, 16 14 inch guns with British BVHE, oh, and a 25 second reload time. Oh, it's it's gonna be something when the ship comes out. I, I hope to god it's just like a slightly larger King George V hole with like the exact same armor scheme. So at tier 9 and 10 matches, you can just dunk on it as a trade-off for having just such an, uh, an, an, an insane level of firepower. But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about all this news in the comments down below. We'll be live streaming right here on the channel. Yeah, let us know what you think. Comments, chat, throw everything out there, boys, gals, and gals and gals and guys. I think the Des Moines... Uh, Playing very smartly there. He's not going to pop out from behind that uh, semi-glacier. Uh, oh, my. Okay, so let's see what else we can come up with to provide some information for everybody. Uh, we got Carbine Carlito, German Super Battleship Hanover. Eh, I don't know. Personally, I find a great guy, but his voice just, it's like sandpaper on sandpaper for some reason. Or a uh, teacher taking the fingernails to the chalkboard. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to my old standby. Great guy. I like this guy. He's a controversial figure. Some people don't like him, but uh, he knows his stuff. Mr. Flamu, take it away, sir. Mr. Flamu. We have, we're going to start off with Marlboro. So this is the one we just built earlier, for those that missed it. <laughs> okay. The camo is hilariously over the top but they always tend to be so that's fine also where's my music one second hello mm, tool is good but i want something else no. there we go hmm that's a flat booty that is a flat booty you better believe high velocity pen shells can uh, punch through this and Citadel you potentially. Secondaries look like kind of miniature guns or what was it? 133 millimeter guns? A lot of AA guns. A lot of modern looking AA guns as well. We'll see if it lives up to that. The camo is pretty ugly. It is pretty ugly. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Uh, we can use this captain, he can be our test guy. We can, we'll just spec uh, spec this so we get to get to see the conceal without fiddling with the numbers too much. Okay, equipment wise. Very straightforward. Standard damage gun, standard heal, not a super heal. Interesting. 
armor. 32, 32, 32. So coated in 32, they're Royal Navy-esque. Citadel armor. This is an exposed citadel. 381, that is, <laughs> holy shit. Okay, this is all citadel armor. Jesus. That is a lot of citadel armor, holy shit. Good lord. Bro, okay. Okay, so this is the Marlboro, which is a tier nine British battleship. And uh, what do we have here, folks? What do we have here? It looks, uh, looks like a lot of friggin' guns. Let's see what Flamusa is. Helps if I uh, go to live screen, doesn't it? Sorry, folks. Okay, so angling highly important, highly important. Is this, in fact, if you compare it, mm, similar looking, just much taller than KGVs, much taller than KGVs, I don't know. So this is a huge signal, absolutely huge. Let's see, four uh, x four, twenty five second reload. That is very fast. Four point eight k HG with twenty four percent is actually terrible. Especially the fire chance is terrible. That's almost cruiser levels of HE. Like in terms of fire chance. 4.8k isn't impressive either. Hmm. Good lord. Compared to Lion, 7.248. It's half the fire chance of the Lion. Half the fire chance of the Lion. And the Alpha goes from 7.2 to 4.8. Is this, let's see. 757 initial velocity mk6b mk6b same shell velocity but much much worse much much worse numbers so it's these shells but incredibly nerfed hmm hold on how does this happen the King George is a tier seven, and this is a tier nine. So the tier nine guns are nerfed compared to the tier seven. What gives here? Like, what's the rationale behind engineering the ship in that manner? Post in comments, chat, let me know what you think, okay? It is a lot. Uh, with wargaming like they're like ha we're gonna make this battleship with huge amounts of guns and then we're gonna nerf the reload the dispersion and the gun alpha so it actually doesn't feel like it has a huge amount of guns <laughs> like it's always like the, the kind of their thing hmm well that's uh interesting ap is it standard looks like a 7b is it duke of york Does it have improved pen angles? Does it have improved pen angles? I don't think so, right? Do we know? Let's see. I want to check. Let's see. Our thing, fitting tool. Let's see. Ship comparison. Our fitting tool. Uh, test ship cruiser. Okay, premium cruiser. Shit, where is it? Oh shit, it's, uh, I'm an idiot. It's a battleship. Marlboro, okay. Standard pen angles. Standard pen angles. 
standard fuse. Hmm. I don't know what website that is that he's using there, but that looks like a wealth of information. He's got a treasure trove here. I haven't seen this site. This is on Reddit, I think, by the looks of it. Are we able to tell? Edible bug. How do you get this site? Let's go back a little bit. Okay, let's go forward and let's see. Wow's fitting tool. Let's take a closer look here. Gonna have to go back to that, not able to pull it up. But that looks like a pretty cool site full of information. Absolutely. But you should feel it under the Or I think it's nice. Lion. Oh, yeah, it's not so Lion is still jumping. So it's still jumping. Lion is still jumping. It's still jumping. It's still jumping. It's still jumping. The problem, the problem is this version. Wait, what was the signal? <coughs> what? what? Wait, wait. Does, Does it have it that language in this version? Doesn't have battle cruiser dispersion. I don't think so. No, two sixty nine hundred and two sixty nine hundred and sixty two. No, it doesn't. It's got. Wait, it's got. It's got standard battleship dispersion with 1.4 sigma. And it's and got it's the shield. Is she reading that right? 1.4 sigma? Seven. Holy crap. It's got the shield velocity of the tier 7. So, oh no. And the HE pendant at the tier 7 as well. Okay, but that's not too much of an issue. But shit. That is really bad. That is really bad. 1.4 Sigma. Like, what gives here? And if he brings up the Sevastopol, which is uh, Russian, this is where people come into the uh, Russian bias here. And we'll see the difference. Take notes. This Marlboro... Tier 9, got Tier 7 guns, basically. As a matter of fact, the Tier 7 may uh, be better. And uh, the other thing is a Sigma of 1.40. Like, come on, that's just utter crap. Like, it's really pathetic. That is bad. bad. Holy shit. That's actually terrible. Yikes. We can slot reload mode on it, which is an advantage. But that's a pretty oof. Secondaries are bad. Only 10 22 millimeter pen. Wait, why do they only have 22 millimeter pen? They don't get the quarter pen buff? Is that intentional? They don't get the quarter pen buff that the main guns do. And no super heal either. And no huge sit. So, 
Wait, what's the concealment? 13.4. That's not that special. Maneuverability. That's not good either. That is literally significantly worse than Lion's. Lion has the same conceal, but handles better and has a super heal and has much smaller citadel. Much, much smaller citadel. Hmm. That's. I don't know. Like, okay, I've never played it, so I cannot speak from having played it. But just looking at the numbers here, um, this seems really rough. They, these are quad turrets as well. And looking at the numbers, this is a big steaming turret. Believe it or not, looks beautiful. You know, British. Uh, prior to the Second World War, and even up until the uh, early part of the Second World War, they controlled the seas. You're out in the Atlantic Ocean, British... Uh, Hail Britannica, you know? It's, uh, it's unbelievable. So to say there is no Russian bias is... Uh, a misnomer just based on factual presentations that keep coming up over and over again over the number of years now, especially the last couple of years. Hey, listen, I like a great Russian cruiser, but come on, let's give the other uh, uh, nations uh, a fair stab at it too, eh? Like I remember the developers talking about balance and stuff like that. And it was nice, uh, great marketing, but uh, the reality is in conflict with the statements from the developers. I'm sure they mean well, don't get me wrong, but, and that's a big but, B-U-T, not B, and it could be B-U-T-T -T with capital letters. And the downside of quad turrets is that the turrets are extremely wide, which generally translates to much poorer firing angles. Like you can already see, if you try to turn this turret around, the turret is going to bump into this shit here. So the firing angle is going to be really bad. Like the firing angles are going to be really bad, which means in order to use your guns, you have to give a lot of broadside. And you have no armor and no, or you have a huge citadel, very little armor and no super heal. And the firing angles are unfitting too. Interesting. Let's see. All right, let's check. Mm. Can we see sector here? Forty two. Forty two. Lion has notoriously bad. Notoriously bad firing angles, and it sits at 44. Holy shit. They are awful. They are, they are awful. They are, they are really awful. They are, they are really awful. Ha! Huh, well. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm trying to look at the positive. I'm trying to look at like what the upside is here. Maybe it doesn't have like a lot of the AA. Four. Seven point seventy five percent. That's not good. Medium range is good. But long range is terrible, and it's only 3.5 range, and stuff like Nakimov won't even enter that area, so. Hmm. I don't want to be too negative about the ship I've never played, Chap. I don't want to, I don't want to come across as too negative about the ship I've, never, I've never, never played, but I'm literally trying to figure out a situation where I think this ship would shine. And... And 
Uh, I, I don't understand. Like, I actually... I don't know what this ship is supposed to be good at. The AA is poor. The armor is poor. Um, the Citadel is huge. The health doesn't stand out in any way. 76k with no super heal. That's... That's with nothing special going for it. Um, the gun angles are terrible. The Sigma is 1.4. The reload is good. The reload is good. It does reload. I mean, the HEDPM is good. But the problem is, of course, it's battleship dispersion with 1.4 Sigma. So the actual DPM that you're of the shells that you're going to be landing is probably going to be terrible. So... Shotgun borrow, right? Like, I could see at close range... The sheer weight of the armament could be interesting, but it's 356, so if you shoot AP, they can just angle. And you don't really want to brawl in this thing. The torpedo belt is 23, that's not good. The citadel is huge. Once again, no heal, no special things. Huge superstructure. It's Royal Navy flat turrets, so these are really easy to break. Like, these are hilarious. 303 million. These are hilariously easy to break. Are these even squishier than these? They're even squishier than lion turrets. Like th these are these are hilariously squishy these turrets. I mean, like we, we know Jean Bart. People love breaking Jean Bart turrets, and uh, Jean Bart turrets are hundred millimeter thicker plating and slightly angled angled plating as well. Uh, this is this these are like ridiculously squishy. It's three o three huge flat surface. I mean, most cruisers are going to be breaking these turrets. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm really struggling to see an upside here. I'm really struggling. I, I don't, I don't know. It just, I'm sorry, but this ship just looks junk. It looks really bad. Petra will destroy these turrets. Yeah, easily. Easily. I mean, yeah, most, I think, divine and shit at close range will break them easily as well. 3 or 3 flat surface. This, I don't know what to tell you. This ship just seems really, really bad so far. It, it, it might play different. I don't know, maybe, but I, I don't, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. You gotta understand, like, if a Petro pushes you in this thing, you can't even shoot the nose with AP. Because, the, like, the vulnerable part of Petro nose is 25, and 356 literally only overmatch 24 millimeters. So even light cruisers will be able to go nose in on this thing. Like, even a Seattle can go nose in and tank your shells. I don't think so. Skilled player easily can make 100k with the ship. Okay, that's that's not a very high like that, that's that's not placing the bar very high. A skilled player getting 100,000 damage spamming H in a battleship. That's uh well, I don't know what's to I don't know how to break it to you but like that's that's really not setting the bar very high. In fact, if the best players, if skilled players can only get 100,000 damage in this, then that's a tragedy. But yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see it. Maybe someone else will find something about it that I missed. Something about it that, that stands out, but... Uh, for me, issues here are firing angles, accuracy, lack of both both HE, Alpha, and AP or match, um, lack of health pool, lack of survivability in general, no special conceal, AA is terrible. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's something there I missed, but I just I can't see it. Let's move on to the next ship. Let's move on to the next ship. Okay, we can look at the F Sherman. 
podcast. What do we have? Damage con standard. Really strong American smoke. What is the maneuverability? It was also worse than Alliance. The maneuverability wasn't good at all. 8% speed boost, standard, and defensive AA. Okay. None of these are changeable. 7.9k alpha torps. Yeah, we can look at those. Standard depth charges. Okay. Okay, we're gonna look at this later. Nothing special here. If Sherman. Very Cold War esque. This thing fires sap, yes, that's literally the kind of the gimmick on it. Forest Sherman. Interesting. Let's see, what is the description actually? Wait. Uh, we can, let's hover over. Oops, yes, eh? F. Sherman. A series of destroyers built after World War II and designed with the experience gained from the conflict in mind. The ship's armament was primarily aimed at fighting off aerial and underwater attacks. Okay. Fair enough. After World War II, yes. Let's see. Armor. Anything special? Standard and 19. Not the 21 that the gearing gets but 19 across the board. Oops, that was equipment. Oh yeah, we can't look at the other stats, can we? Guns, HE 1.8, SAP 2.7, 2.5 second reload, really fast charge burst. So three gun, gun SAP gunboat potential. AA mounts five. That doesn't tell us a whole lot, does it? Because in World of Warships, AA mounts, like the value of AA mounts doesn't mean, make any sense. They, they, can, they can change depending on their mood. 16.5k, that's gearing torps, 12.8 range, 33.9 with speed boost. This thing is pretty fast with flag and speed boost. Let's see. 33.9x, uh, 1.08x, 1.05, and we are doing 38. 38 and a half. Mm. Not that fast. What's the DPM on it? Does it? I mean, the reload seems pretty long, especially if it's a, it's American guns. So the shot arcs are going to be poor. What is the DPM on this thing? Long. Okay, let's see. What is the DPM on this thing? Fifteen till. USA test ship. Uh, oh, it's not here yet. Really? Oh, they don't even have it here yet. Unfortunate. But that looks like really poor DPM, actually. Around 200k. What's the SEP DPM? Wait, is that the SEP DPM? 200k. That seems really bad. That seems really bad, actually. And the torp tubes are... Yeah, it's, look, it's two torps tubes per side. Two plus two. They look really rigid as well. So I don't think there's a whole lot of flexibility in the launching. These look incredibly rigid, in fact. I don't think they can move much at all. I think they're going to be quite rigid. Hmm. They have three degrees of traverse. Jesus. Yeah, that's what I thought. Very, very rigid torpedo tubes. Okay, that makes it, hmm, I mean, they're subject to change, but that doesn't look very impressive. Single gun turrets, yeah, the dispersion might be a huge issue. Hmm, we'll see. I mean, this one is very early, and things like reload is something that's very easy for them to change. They can literally just go into the num. they can just fiddle with the numbers as much as they want. But it's supposed to be an AA ASW ship, so uh, obviously they're gonna the things that they they're probably gonna try to make stand out is the ASW damage and the AA values. Sevastopol, Europe design, nineteen forty. 
a large artillery ship, Project 69I, with technical characteristics close to high-speed small battleships. The ship's main battery is represented by German-built 380mm guns. You know what's pretty extra humorous about this? This is the sixth tier 10 cruiser that the Soviets get. They have Nevsky Petro, of course, and then they have Stalingrad, Moskva, Smolensk, and now Sevastopol. Hmm, Phil Grady, thank you for the 36. That gives them six tier 10 cruisers, which is literally more than any other nation in the game. In fact, some nations, Germans, I think they have what, one? Hindenburg? And I think uh, Italy has two. UK has three with Gibraltar. Uh, Japan has two, Yoshino and Yamanza. And the Navy that basically was an absolute meme now has the most. They even have more than the Americans. The Americans have five, I think. Worcester, Des Moines, Salem, Puerto, Austin. That's five, right? Okay, here's the thing, folks, and this is what I'm trying to uh, make a point about. The uh, United States and Britain pretty much lift, lifted the world in World War II. They carried most everything in World War II. Uh, it took a while for the Americans to get in, but uh, when they did, there was a uh, a, a great handout, a reach out to help the uh, Russians from the Allies in order to uh, uh, provide uh, another front. And uh, it's unbelievable. Without the Allies, the Russians may not have pulled it off. So when you have the U.S. and the Brits that were uh, the major players. And then you take this ar arcade game and uh, Russia is, uh, you know, I just got to go with the Russian bias. So, so even, even the, the American... A tier 10 is less than the Soviet cruiser force. And the thing is why I think people, people kind of get annoyed by this is because, well, Soviet cruisers tend to kind of define the game. Soviet cruisers tend to kind of define the game, and that's that's really one of the main issues. People are like, oh, you're just hating it because it's Soviet? Mm, more the fact that I'm hating it because of the way Wargaming treats Soviet ships. I mean, Moskva was the OG ship. And I mean, we still see Moskva today if the other Soviet ships are, are, are banned. But after Moskva, we had what? When did Smolensk come? No, after Moskva, we had Stalingrad. And Stalingrad was basically meta-defining. Um, it basically broke the game, especially in competitive. Ships were defined basically on how good do you play against Stalin. And we had Hinden spam, we had IFHE Henry spam, and now we had what, Goliaths and shit and Venezias. Basically all the ships were added because of how well they can deal with Stalingrad. Like that was, that was what defined the meta, Stalingrad uh, as a whole. Stalingrad got nerfed after the whole well, the biggest Stalingrad nerf that, that came was the fire prevention change. Honestly, I don't know why they're nerfing it again. The fire prevention change was more than enough. But that was already two ships. And then we have Petro. Or sorry, before Petro, we had Smolensk, which was so fundamentally broken that Wargaming had to remove it from the game. Like, hilariously broken. Uh, and, I mean, the numbers people were putting up. People who can't even play Cruiser well were, were doing 300k damage in, in the Smolensk. Like, that ship was hilariously broken. And then we had Petro that is so broken that it's basically universally banned everywhere. It's been nerfed four times now. It's still always banned from everything. And Nevsky that is also another, well, this is a meta breaking ship. Smolensk was kind of meta breaking for randoms. And Nevsky, it's kind of a meta defining ship as well because um, whenever, if Nevsky wasn't banned in any comp, we always see double Nevsky and a DD to smoke it up. And that's why people aren't so happy about a Soviet cruiser. It's not because, oh no, it's a Soviet fantasy ship. They're like, hold on, Flamu, you're forgetting about the Kronstadt. Remember the Kronstadt tier nine. Half, I don't know how many fantasy ships there are in this game, but 
Soviet fantasy ships tend to completely change the game, the way the game is played. That, that's really what, what happens in the game. I mean, we, we look at the, the American cruisers, the Moen, the original kind of meta-defining ship. We have Salem that kind of fills the same purpose. But then we have ships like Puerto Rico. Uh, no one plays that besides causing a shit show. No one cares about it. We have Austin. Literally, no one plays that either. Uh, what was the other one? They had one more. That's... What's the other one? Shit. I forgot. I just mentioned it earlier. Now I forgot about it. Uh, American. Yoshi. American. Okay. Thank you, Hapshan. Uh, oh, yeah. Wooster. Wooster was, Wooster was popular until they nerfed the radar. And now you don't even see it anymore. Like, Wooster had a brief time in the limelight. And then was gone. So, like, the difference between other cruisers and... Soviet cruiser editions is so goddamn night and day. Yoshino was added, literally, okay, who gives a shit? It's a free citadel to farm. Uh, like, no other cruisers in the game, when they get added, tend to change up this game as much as Soviet tier 10 cruisers. They are like, they, they, they always change the things, everything happens. And it's, it's amusing. The word he's looking for is Soviet uh, cruisers are god tier for the most part god tier because sevastopol is actually one of the few ships that were actually laid down like they had a hull and everything in place so it has a lot of historical basis but the problem is the way wargaming tends to treat these tier 10 cruisers makes everyone really really worried about what are they going to pull out the bag this time what are they going to pull out of the bag this time maybe it will be a different copium maybe it won't be as bad as the last time's copium Twenty six second reload, thirty six and three hundred eighty millimeter guns. Sixty two point six K health. Okay. A lot of AA. That's a, they get a lot of really good AA on this. I'm hoping the armor I'm hoping the armor and survivability won't be so absurd on this one. Because I don't want another Petro. Like Petro is such a terrible addition to the game. Nineteen point one. Thirty three point five knots with speed. Isn't this kind of like a super cruiser? Okay, interesting. Fast reloading damage con. Only three. You're I wonder if he's gonna pull up the uh, the Sigma on this ship. It'd be really interesting to see what the Sigma is on this ship. That's what I'm interested to find out. What's the sh uh, Sigma gonna be on this ship? Hope he brings it up. Uh, defensive AA, interchangeable with Hydro. 20% <laughs> speed boost. Uh-oh, okay. 20% speed boost. So we're... This thing did what? 33.5. 33.5 X. So this thing can do 42 knots with speed flag and whenever the speed boost is active. 42.2 knots whenever it pops speed boost okay mm -hmm. so 42.2 knots with three eight millimeter guns fair enough the heal lasts a full minute you have six of them actually because you're going to speak superintendent you're going to have seven of them um 187 187 times 60 let's see 187 Was it, was it exactly 587? 187 times 60 is 11.2, and then we get 11.2x, 1.2 because we're running the healing flag. So he heals for 13,500. 13,500, and you have seven of them. What was it? 13,464x7. So healing potential is 94,000. Plus, of course, potential Kuznetsov, because Kuznetsov, you need to include Kuznetsov, because Kuznetsov makes ships that are already kind of busted, it just breaks them. But even without Kuznetsov, we're talking 94,000, 95,000 healing potential. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it's, maybe it's squishy though. Maybe that, that's the thing, maybe it's squishy. Because it's supposed to be like a Kronstadt hull, which means the armor couldn't be that good. 
Okay, see. Okay, this is interesting. Here we go. Overmatchable nose. This is actually Kronstadt esque. It's not exactly a big nose. It's not a whole lot of nose here. Get color mirror 30? 30. Okay, this is already a lot better than um, Stalin ship. Or, or Petro ship. 30 at tier, tier 10 um, is kind of farmable by almost, almost everything. Montana crying in a corner. I'm sorry, who's Montana? I've never heard of him. 230 armor to 30 to 30. Okay, it's it's layered armor. 330 citadel. This is the citadel. This is just armor. This is the actual citadel. It's kind of waterline. Actually, slightly above waterline. We don't know if there is hidden internal sit internal platings. Um, they often tend to have hidden internal platings on, on Russian ships. Um, well, not just on Russian ships, on a lot of ships, but the Russians are kind of famous for it. Uh, I wonder if there are any. We don't know. Bet there will be plates. Yeah, there tends to be quite a lot of hidden internal plates. Citadel deck armor, sorry, 90, followed by... Oh, this is the Citadel. Okay, it's got the Kronstadt weird Citadel. 90 here. Oops. Outside is 230. So that gives it 320 millimeters of Citadel plating in the center. That's a big black hole armor, though. A lot of shells are going dis to disappear into this. In fact, cruisers will probably struggle with the Citadel. If it's anything like Kronstadt, Kronstadt is very difficult to Citadel with cruisers because this shit eats all the shells. On the other hand, here is the vulnerable part. It's one to one cron. Okay, if it's one to one cron copy pasta uh, based on the G3 model, then you can sit that other through the nose. It's not a big nose, but you can absolutely do it. Just have to, have to hit the tip. Hmm. Interesting. I, I wonder what the other values on this ship is. Apparently it gets like, it gets the German 380mm guns, you might recognize these from the Bismarck, they're standard like German 380s, but it gets them with a twist, which means uh, I think it was it was improved pen angles and short fuse, aka basically German guns but better, and it's going to be battle cruiser dispersion as well. Siegfried guns, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping uh, this is going to be a Soviet cruiser that isn't going to kind of mess up the game. I'm hoping that's a thing. It would be like kind of the first time, but maybe it will be. Maybe it will please, please be. Uh, I'm kind of worried though, like a ship with, how much health did this thing have? A ship with 62.6k health. Thank you, Santa Zabita, for the 61. A ship with 62.6k health, 94,000 healing potential, and the ability to do 42 knots. I feel like this thing is going to be very, very hard to kill off, and it's going to be able to disengage. It might, but maybe it won't be survive. I don't think it'll be survivable nose in like Petro is, but it will actually require active play to be survivable, meaning you have to disengage with your speed and heal up. And that alone would already make it a more enjoyable experience to fight against than Petro. Because Petro just sits there and shrugs off all the damage. This thing will take damage, and maybe you can force it to disengage and heal and so forth, so... Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it will be, I'm hoping that it will not be quite so breaking, game breaking as other Russian ships. That's, that's my hope. You need to play it with a brain, it seems. Yeah, I'm hoping that's a thing that it actually requires active, because the problem with Petro is that it's, it's passively tanky. It requires zero input from the player besides sitting still nose in to be tanky. This thing appears that it actually requires active play to be survivable, and that alone already makes it a much more intriguing concept than than the Petra. Dido. 1940. 
entered service. A relatively small cruiser designed to provide AA cover for squadrons and interact with destroyers. One of the first ships to carry dual-purpose gun, dual guns as their main uh, battery. Okay. 133s, 6 second reload, 23.6k health, that's not a lot. 8k torps, 40 by 1, 40 by 1 range, okay. 32.3 knots, decent speed considering it has smoke. No hydro, only defensive. Short burst smokes. Hmm. It, it, it makes me, I mean, the ship does look beautiful, but it makes me a bit sad that uh, the Pan Asian knockoff Dido we get for free, but then if you want a real Dido, we have to pay for it. But it does look good. Don't press armor scheme. Uh oh. Three torpedoes per side. Uh oh, why not? Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Okay, holy shit. Okay, that's a lot of squish. That's a lot of squish. Holy moly, that is a lot of squish. Wait, is this it? No. Okay, so this is the Sith. This is just plating. So this box, this dumb box here. Let's just sit that out. That's not a lot of armor to punch through. Wait, really? Are there anything hidden? Any hidden platings? If there's no hidden platings, then we're talking 13 plus 25, which is literally no armor at all. That feels like... That is squish. Overmatchable top, oh boy, 13 millimeters. Uh, wait, 13 millimeters. That means technically, if it's 13 here and 13 here, a lot of cruisers can overmatch into your citadel through the nose. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's very squishy. That's incredibly squishy. Thirteen, they will have to remake it. That's what I'm thinking. Thirteen is really squishy. Like two or three millimeter guns, um, they will overmatch. Like you should, two or three is like imagine Furutaka, overmatch and citadels. Every he overmatches every part except for these parts that he'll pen. That looks kind of scary. <laughs> looks looks kind of scary. We'll see. This thing looks very squished though. Six second reload on what? Ten guns? Could be interesting. It does have smoke. We'll see what the concealment values and so far what they eke out, but it might be saved by no armor is best armor. It might, but it looked pretty thick. That's my, that's my worry is that the ship is pretty thick. What else do we have? Oh, Canadians. The camo that I laughed at. Okay, let's see. Description. 1936, a heavy cruiser designed in Great Britain, similar to the county class ships, which had, above anything else, more powerful torpedo armament envisioned in the initial project. Okay. Interesting. 15 second reload on 203s. AP only, by the looks of it. Oh, this thing gets the burst fire, right? You can shoot two bursts, and then you wait 40 seconds. Fair enough. Thirty-five point one k health for cruiser two six. That's not too bad. Actually, actually quite good. Fourteen point six k range, thirty three knots. That's the burst fire gimmick. What do you get? You get fifteen percent AP damage, much better dispersion, minus twenty five, and hundred percent armor pen. Oh boy, I think this ship is going to be entirely dependent on this one because they give it so many strong values. Zvani, thank you for the 39, and Linden, thank you for the 23. 
I think they are highly going to balance the ship based on this thing. And it, this worries me a bit because you might end up with a situation where the ship in itself is pretty eh, but then when the gimmick is active, it's a monster. So it's like, it's kind of like Austin, basically. Like, you pop Reload Booster, you're a god. Reload Booster is on cooldown, you're a meme. Interesting. 3.8k alpha. 4k hydro, standard damage. Hmm. So 8 guns. So you can launch 16 AP volleys at someone within a second. Or 16 AP shells, sorry, at someone with 100% extra pin, extra damage, and basically pinpoint dispersion. So you got 16 shells. You can, like, it's literally smash and drive away. Smash and drive away. Hmm. Interesting. That is a smokestack and a half. Holy shit. A lot of small secondaries. Okay. Sixteen millimeter planting. At tier six that's pretty okay. I mean it's battleships will smash you of course, but cruisers with AP won't do too much about you. Really thick deck armor, 38 millimeters. Interesting. That bounces basically everything at the tier. Some superstructure, but a huge, huge broadside. A huge, gigantic broadside. Holy moly. Quite a thick ship as well. Okay, let's see. Let's get rid of, oops, let's get rid of these. What are the turret armor? 25. This is a big box. Oh, is it? Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of like Zhao armor. It's actually Zhao shaped armor. So, let's see. At the top, you punch through 25, and then you got angled 38. This is actually really well angled. This is going to be incredibly hard to sit that if it hits here. In fact, I think it's highly unlikely. It's all to bounce on basically everything. But if you punch through right at the waterline, you can see this shit is actually just above the waterline. You see that? It's just above the waterline. So if you punch through right here, you get pretty easy citadels. So you gotta be perfectly on the waterline. Perfectly on the waterline and you get sits. If you go slightly above it, no way. You'll probably get four pens though because the ship is so thick. Unless, wait, this thing goes to the waterline. Oh, 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 never mind. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold on. This thing goes all the way below the waterline. Oh, it's got the armor here as well. Never mind. Never mind. That's going to be really hard to sit that on. If, this, you, if you want to sit this thing, you have to, you have to catch it turning, I think. You have to catch it third turning or you just gotta I think if you hit the water line though you can punch through this it's so thin I think you can just brute force through it but it most likely if you want to sit this thing it's gonna be when it's turning cruisers will struggle hard to sit that this thing hmm interesting interesting the first Spanish ship and my god, the armor on it. Really letting everyone know that, yes, it is in fact a Spanish ship. <laughs> There's a hidden plate on the torque protection. Is there? Let's see. Let's check it out. No, yeah, yeah, 51. But that's not a lot. That is not a lot. If it turns, this is not a lot of armor to punch through. This is pretty thin. I don't think that hidden plate is going to do a whole lot. It just gives you a bit of extra durability there, but it's not a 51, it's not a lot. This ship relies on bouncing shells, not tanking them. It needs to bounce it off the armor. 
Um, if you try to tank them, it's just going to go straight through. Interesting. Looks kind of like a bathtub, but we'll see. We'll see. This is a ship you absolutely have to play because that gimmick can either be really, really good or questionable. It's the numbers on it look good, but it might be that the default stats on the ship are shit to make up for the gimmick being really good. It is. It is a tier six cruiser. Yep, that armor for a tier six cruiser is really strong. Can you please show the USNDD? Sherman again, just jump, j open the VOD. I say VOD so you can go back and look at it. Check the AP pen. I wish I could. I don't think there's th they are in the fitting tool yet. I do not think these ships are in the fitting tool yet. Yeah, I don't think they're there yet. There's no Spain to select. They are not there. They are not checkable yet hmm. yeah i read that it has really low penetration without the gimmick so i'm worried that without the gimmick it's going to be really really bad and then when the gimmick is active it's going to be super strong and that's kind of how it's going to be balanced like it's austin all over again so all of this just to put up playing marlboro i don't think i can't play with it i think yeah sadly or I don't know, sadly. <laughs> 1.4 Sigma Battleship doesn't seem that impressive. Okay, what's this? Interesting. Let's let's look at this. What is this? This is the penetration. Oh no. When he's talking penetration here, folks. He mentions penetration. He's not talking about girlfriends, okay? Get that uh, being amorous out of the mindset. Oh, no, that's terrible. But he only has 155s. And it's got significantly better AP pen. And Devonshire that has two of threes as well. That is, oh my god, that's a, that's a gigantic difference. In fact, if I look at it, I, these curves feel like they almost correlate but i don't know if a hunt like uh, up until this point this is roughly where your range ends it feels like it's almost they took this and cut it in half to make this so the boosters basically must have but i don't you can't i don't think you can still reach at close range you get a good buff from about 230 to 460 up here but then uh, if, we're, if we're looking at around here let's say 10 kilometers we're sitting at what 200 and this is at oh no it, it actually oh the scale is a bit the, the scale is actually not that accurate no no it's gonna end up being pretty good it goes from 125 to about 250 wait I'm looking at the wrong one I'm an idiot no, I'm not. I'm not. This is actually the right one. Jesus. Yeah, you jump from about 100 and uh, maybe not quite 125, but you'll jump way or way or 200. So you'll jump up here with the boost. So it's going to be really, really boost reliant. So you're worse than the Budioni without the boost, and then you're better than the Devonshire uh, with it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's I think we're gonna have a classic example of a ship that is ship that is gimmick balanced instead of the other way around. A good example of this was the Dutch cruisers. They were entirely balanced around their gimmick, and then Wargaming nerfed the gimmick, and then the ships ended up being junk because they didn't buff the ships in any way afterwards. They were like, yeah, we nerfed the gimmick and then we forgot about the ship. Yeah, that was fast. <clears throat> Holy crap. Let's look at building the Repulse and the Marlboro. I think they're crap ships, but let's take a look at them. Uh, let's see. 
let's go. Dockyard. Alpha kill, thank you for the 31. Mmm. Ooh, oh, ooh. No shit. Art department, let's go. Show me your magic art department. Oh shit. Oh, here we go, here we go. Sure. Okay. Because you get the repulse on the way. And the dreadnought. Okay. So let's buy. We'll buy this. I mean, it's PTSD blue, so no one gives a shit. Yes. Let's go. Money, money, money. Well, 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 yep. I mean, it's PTSD blues though, so it literally does not even matter. Dreadnoughts are excited about that one. Mm. Hmm. I mean, this is this is just like a couple of minutes of the art department flexing. And if there's something I always have time for in World of Warships, is watching the best department do their thing. I always have time for that. Never ever am do I not have time for this. Dude, this nose? That's a lot of schnoes. Are you kidding me? Hello? That's a lot of schnoz. We're not gonna start building that jig. <clears throat> That's a big nose. We call that a big schnoz. A humongous schnoz. That's the nose of all noses. And then schnoz. No way it goes all the way over here, does it? Does it really go all the way over there? No way. Now I'm curious. They're building everything except the nose, keeping me in suspense here. Okay, here's the booty. Wait. Yeah, that's the booty. Okay, show me the schnoz. Holy shit, they're building a lot. God damn. What's the gimmick of the Marlboro anyway? A lot of guns at tier 9, but then they don't give it like uh, the, the Royal Navy HE. So it's a bit questionable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay, collect the rewards. Do we actually get the Dreadnought? I wonder if they actually give the Dreadnought to me now. We'll see. Oh, I got it? Oh, shit. Wait, does that mean we can test the uh, Dreadnought and Repulse? Are we going to get the Repulse as well? Because that's the Repulse right here in the background, for those that missed it. Okay, yeah, purchase another sh five ship buildings. Yes. Pepega swipe. Okay, we're installing, installing the engines. We can tell these are not Kremlin engines. They're far too small. 280 horsepower, by the way, or 280,000 horsepower, by the way. You can't play them. Oh, wait, what? I feel like there's so much effort that goes into this, like from the art department. Adding all of this stuff. I wonder if they've already automated it. I wonder if they already automated it, so they just need to they create the layer and then it automatically adds all of those just to save time. They probably have. Man, that's a lot of hull. Holy shit, that's a lot of hull. Like this is one Petro, one Kremlin, another Petro, and another Kremlin. <laughs> and they just keep adding on, man. They must have automated to, to it to an extent, otherwise the cell time rates would be pretty high, right? There we go. Collect the reward. Yeah, let's complete it. 32! Holy shit! 
24k man that's a lot of dubs if you want so if you want to go straight for this thing that's a lot of dubs boys that is a lot of dubs pts dubs are not that important though so we don't care absolutely say recommend grinding this shit instead of paying for it on the live server if you really want it because that's a lot of dubs man that's a very very expensive ship if you do it like this Yeah, as you notice, that's a lot of doubloons. Is it worth it from where I sit? No, it's not. Not worth it. Just too much for too little reward. That's my point of view, and I'm sticking with it. Here we go, here we go. Okay. No, you don't need to add any more superstructure. You can go with the Kremlin superstructure approach. I'm okay with that. Oh my god, the ship gets thicker and thicker by the minute. Aurelius, thank you for the three months, my dude. comes though okay that's enough no more superstructure needed that's a good amount that's a petro superstructure right there no more needed oh is there supposed to be sound for this i can't hear shit hmm there they are, the quad turrets. Thank you, Mr. HRK. 51 months. It really has been a long time. Holy shit. There they are, the quads. Oh my god, that's a lot of guns. 16 guns. What are those secondaries? Are those, what are those, Minotaur guns? What are those? Hmm. Or are those like daring guns? Lightning guns, oh. Man, that's a, look at this four, look at this five head. Look at this 10 head, holy shit, it's got a bigger forehead than I do. Holy shit, that's gonna be farmed. Oh my. Bigger forehead, but uh, based on some other uh, observations from people I do not know, I don't know if uh, a bigger friggin' id than what you have. <laughs> With love from Michael J. My God, that thing is going to be farmed. Are you kidding me? It will end up like he's in a shit pen, then you will not play it. Yeah, I don't know, but it's got it's how much HE? It, I mean, 16 HE. It's Folks, I gotta add one thing. This guy has to be, without a doubt, one of the most knowledgeable that I know about the game. Now, the other one that uh, really went uh, in depth on the uh, sidelines was uh, Little White Mouse. So, uh, uh, Wargaming themselves alienated him. And uh, Little White Mouse and Lert, L-E-R-T, were, uh, you know, kind of like uh, uh, co-participators, uh, if I can put it to you that way. I think Lert's in Europe and uh, Little White Mouse is in uh, Canada. So, between uh, just these three people... Just an incredible wealth of information about this game that's just so invaluable. 
And Little White Mouse reviews were in such depth, which was greatly appreciated. And, and they friggin' torpedoed this kind of stuff. You know, such arrogance. All for their own arbitrary version of balance. There you go, folks. I said it. Balance. It's Royal Navy. I don't know if it's going to be good HE though. That's all the guns, man. Okay, collect the reward. Okay, we got, got the pulse. Oh no, he got a piece of crap. Marlboro's a piece of crap no, by the looks of it. X for that. Ship added Marlboro. Oh, can we look at it? Bug, 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 bug. Let's see, they're all Royal Navy. Marlboro! Oh shit. Okay, let's look at the repulse first. Isn't it like, what, tier 6? Okay, first of all, we're gonna... Oh my god, this camo is terrible, and this port is terrible. First of all, we're gonna do, go to the best looking port in the game. There we go. And we're gonna get rid of... I don't know what they were thinking with this camo, but holy moly, it is ugly. Jesus. Do we have anything else? Oh, there we go. Ooh, there we go. Okay, we'll go with this one. I was saying, uh, I forgot to mute myself. Yeah, I'm a more traditionalist in that respect with camo. Uh, the other, uh, the first one, just so garish. Uh, I just can't, uh, can't handle that. Traditional when it comes to these ships. That's my game. Royal Navy battle cruisers. How long have we waited? This thing has a shit ton of superstructure, though. Look at all these shell catchers. Oh my god. It's got pretty sleek lines, though. Okay, well, let's see. <laughs> oh god. Alan was here. Thank you for the 18. Oh boy. Okay, 16 millimeter gigantic Chinos. 26 millimeter deck are matchable as well by 380s. Uh, 16 millimeter. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of shell catching. Oh my god. This thing is gonna eat shit if someone shoots at it. Holy moly. Okay, well, let's see. How's the Citadel? Okay, is this Citadel? No, this is just key. Okay, so the Citadel is actually. It's pretty low in the water. I can see Overmatch no citadels happening unless there's hidden plates. I can see Overmatch no citadels happening for sure. It's only 102. Let's see, let's get rid of some superstructure. Let's get rid of any internal armor here. No. Can we see any internal armor from this way? Oh, there's something here. That's just. Oh, does it have a dick? Does this deck extend out and protect the citadel, I wonder? No, this is this is just the, the, the flat armor. No, just friggin' armor. just for show, not go. Yeah, might might be be just for show, not go. Okay, folks. I've got to uh, get back to some uh, testing and checking out the hardware and re uh, redoing certain things. Uh, based on what I've seen with this Marlboro and the Repulse, Repulse was uh, a well-known ship. Obviously, they don't care about that. They just friggin'... I don't know what it is. These Russian owners, a Russian-run company, create a Russian Navy that never existed. They take uh, a couple of the best navies ever in the history of mankind between the uh, British Royal Navy and uh, the U.S. Navy, and uh, just crap all over them. Like, uh, what is it? Is this uh, Putin get back uh, at the U.S.? Bad enough that uh, Putin controls uh, friggin' Donald J. Trump, 
in the uh, GOP now because most of the GOP are just friggin' falling in line behind him. They just don't get it. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, comments, questions, greatly appreciated. We'll try and sign on back later. But if not, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., New York time, we'll be going live. Hopefully no delays, no hardware issues. That's uh, my hope. And uh, other than that, folks, remember, stay safe, be good, and God love you. Take care. Ciao for now.